If you're going to sell an online program, a product or a service online, you're going to need a sales page. But sales pages can be daunting to create. There's the strategy, the structure, the copywriting, the images, the technical side of it. And hanging over all of that is the pressure for it to sell, which is the whole point of a sales page. So today we're going to go through three things that I think are essential for you to do before you even start building your sales page, which will not only make the process easier and more fun, but will lead to a better converting sales page. Hi folks, if we haven't met before, my name is Wayne. I'm a creative director and a brand designer, and I help coaches and creators to up-level their branding and visuals. So if you're gonna sell something online, you need a sales page that doesn't just do the job, but that works. Oh my God, what am I like? That process starts way before you actually put the sales page together. So there are three things that I think are absolutely essential to do before you start building your sales page. Now, before I get into those, the one thing I have to say is that we're not covering copywriting today. I will be doing a future video on copywriting for sales pages, but that's the one thing we're not going to touch on today. These are three other things, though, that set everything up to make the process easier. So the first really important thing that you need to look at before you start doing anything else for your sales page is the journey. The customer journey in terms of how they experience your sales page is absolutely essential. Essentially, you want to take a client or a visitor to your sales page from a state of agony where they're really struggling with something, they're feeling the pain, to ease, where they feel like they've got it under control and they feel like they have a solution. And that's really the whole purpose of a sales page. I mean, let's face it, the best product in the world is not going to sell if people don't know and believe that it will do the job. Think of it like dating someone or like building any kind of relationship, which after all is what marketing online is about. You don't go straight to a marriage proposal on a first date, usually. What you need to do is to woo the person. They need a bit of wine and dining. They need convincing. They need to learn to trust you. Think about your sales page as a kind of intensive, no like trust journey. But some of these people will have been burned before, so you're going to need to woo them a little. You're going to need to convince them and get them to trust you, like you, and want to buy from you or work with you. Now, to use another metaphor, we also need to plan the journey to make sure that we get to the destination that we're going to. And that's what number one is all about, is thinking about that process. So the key thing for me is that there are a couple of intentions of your sales page, and that's what we have to keep in mind when we're creating this journey. We need to show them that you understand who they are, you understand what they're going through, and that they get to feel like you're talking directly to them. But let me be very clear here, touching on people's pain points doesn't mean that you have to poke an open wound. It's not about making people feel crap for where they are or what they haven't achieved. It's just about showing them that you know what they're going through because you've either been there before or you've done the research and you can speak to them in their language. The second thing is to make people feel like success is inevitable. One of the biggest barriers to people finishing programs or courses or even coaching programs is overwhelm. So Part of this intention is to show them that this is achievable because you have a step-by-step -step plan and because you can show how it's worked for other people. Number three is about helping them to visualize success. Helping them to really imagine what it would be like if they achieved success with your product or program or service. It's about not just telling them what they'll get or what they'll be able to do, but helping them to imagine how much better their life would be if they achieve success with your program and then proving that to them. The fourth thing, of course, is to convince them or show them that you are the right person for them to be working with or to be training with or to be buying from. People want to buy from people they like. And as I said, some of them may have been burned before with courses or products that didn't deliver. So you have to convince them as to why you're the right person. And that can be through Again, the language of making them feel like you really understand them, showing them that you've been where they have. Social proof is a fantastic way of getting this point across to people and also sharing a bit about yourself so that they feel like there is a human behind this. 
And the last thing is to make people feel like the money they're spending is money well spent, that it's not a risk. And the way you do this is of course through social proof and showing them results, particularly if you have real concrete results that you can show them from past students or people who've used your product. But the other thing is also to talk to them in a language that makes them feel like it's all secure. Talk to them about what you can guarantee, what you promise, even if it's just about the promise you make in terms of how you will turn up and what you will show and teach them. So those are the five intentions behind any sales page. And that's kind of the journey you have to help people navigate. You have to take them from possibly never having heard from you to the end of that journey, feeling like not only do they want to work with you or buy from you, but that you have the answer for them. They can trust you, they like you, and they can imagine what success is like through your program or service or product. In my previous video, we walked through the final stages of creating a sales page in Canva uh, using a sales page template that I made it available for people to download for free. If you haven't got that template yet, please go to the link in the description below and you can download that. And one of the things I touched on in there is our number two in this list. Number two in the list of important things to do before you start building your sales page is to gather your assets. Now, in that previous video, I talked you through a number of ways of doing that, but let me first talk about what exactly I mean by gathering your assets. So because there are often multiple sections to a sales page, preparing your assets in advance makes the whole process so much easier and so much more fun. And for this, I'm talking about your brand or design assets. So that could be your logos, it could be your color references, stock images that you already own, videos that you have either recorded or again, stock videos. Um, it could be icons and graphics that you use as part of this brand identity that you're gonna reflect on the sales page or that you've created for this sales page. It could be screen grabs or screen shares of the actual product, particularly if it's an online course to help bring it to life for people so they can feel that there's something really tangible there. These assets also include your biography or a short paragraph, which again will help people understand why you're the right person to work with and a picture that you can put on the sales page somewhere so that people can see who it is that they are talking to or hearing from and getting to know, like, and trust. Another important thing is to have social proof, testimonials to hand so that you can just copy and post those onto your sales page. Also important is to have the details of your program or service or product. And of course, all the options, packages, and pricing possibilities for your product so that you can make that section on the website really clear, which makes it easy for people to buy from you. Now, gathering these assets can be, you know, in a Canva brand board, which I talked through in one of my previous videos, or it can be in a brand kit if you have a pro account of Canva, or it could just be having them accessible in a file or folder or document so that everything is in one place, you can copy and paste it. And it just makes that process so much easier to be creative and have fun with it if you have those assets ready. Now, obviously, if you are using something like Canva, you have access to their whole library of videos and graphics and uh, images there. But even then, if you do the research beforehand and find the ones you want to use that fit with your sales page's design, Having them easily accessible will be a deal breaker in terms of the time and effort that you have to put in to make it look and sound great. So now that you know the journey that you're taking people on and you've gathered all the assets, the next thing before you actually start building the sales page is to plan out the structure of your sales page. Now, this makes a really big difference practically because if you have that planned out beforehand, you can build the overall structure of your page using panels or sections in whatever page builder you're using. And then you can go back and refine and add images and branding details. But it makes it so much easier to get that page built quickly than trying to do these on the fly or as you work through them. Now, no matter what anybody tells you, there is no perfect amount of sections or lengths or anything like that for a sales page. In fact, the length doesn't really matter. Um, phrasing. But there are five key pillars that you need to make sure are covered. Now, the first is obviously the problem, showing them you understand what they're facing, what their pain points are. The next is the solution, not just presenting it to them, but showing them how it works, making them feel secure and convinced that it will work for them. Third is communicating the transformation. You'll often hear people talk about the fact that 
people don't just buy a product, they buy the transformation. And getting them to visualize, imagine, and feel like that transformation is possible for them is absolutely key to convincing them that you're the right person to work with or buy from. The fourth thing is tied to that, and that's the impact. And now this is the more tangible results that they will get from using your program or product or service. And here I always separate it into two, the internal and the external. Now the external are usually the easier ones, and that's things like what will they be able to do at the end of this program or with this product? What are the practical things that they couldn't do before that they'll be able to do now? The internal is where again you show an understanding of your audience or the people you're selling to. And that's about how it will change them, how it will make them feel to achieve success what will they be doing differently? How will they feel different on a day-to-day -day basis? Will it give them more freedom? Will it give them more confidence? It's thinking about those internal aspects which make so much more impact than just the really practical day-to-day -day stuff that they'll get from achieving success with the product or service. And the fifth and last pillar is the purchase. And this is not just about the options and what kind of possibilities they have for payment plans, etc but this is also about the flow of purchase. So one of the things you'll notice from the sales pages that I showed in the previous videos is that I pepper calls to action throughout the sales page. On almost every second section, there is a button that allows them to jump to the buy now section. And that's because at any point in that journey, people may feel ready to make that leap. The other thing to think through is that once they get to your buy now section is to make sure that you have a summary of what they get so that they don't have to scroll up and look through previous content to try and figure out which of these options is right for them. Make it clear on that section. And then of course, make it really easy for them to buy. If you can just put a button that takes them directly to check out where they can pay, that is the ideal. You want to eliminate any of the barriers between them deciding to purchase and actually being able to pay. Now in the PDF that accompanies my free sales page template for Canva, I've actually outlined pretty much all the possible sections, all the ones that are included in my template. And then I've talked about the seven essential sections that are common to every sales page. Now those are based on not just my client work in which I've created hundreds of sales pages, but also on my research with ConvertKit, Kajabi, and all these other places um, I, I noticed that there was a commonality. There were certain sections that were always in those high converting sales pages. And I cover those in the PDF. So do click the link in the description and download that even if you're not gonna build your sales page in, in Canva. Um, that PDF has a list of possible sections and also um, outlines those seven essential sections that I think you really have to have for a sales page to be effective and successful. So those are the three things that I think you have to do before you even start building your sales page. And it's about planning your journey and making sure you understand what that is. It's about gathering your assets so that it's easy for you to actually do the building. And then it's about structuring your sales page to support the journey. If you can plan that out before you actually start building your sales page, the process will be so much quicker, it can be a lot more fun, and it will be much more effective for your customers or your clients. That's it from me today, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. As I said, please feel free to click the link in the description to download that free Canva sales page template. And otherwise, if there are other resources or templates that you think would be useful for you or your business, please leave a comment, let me know, and let me know if this was useful to you. Have a fabulous day.